I'd like you to do this one. I'm kidding, Adrian. Okay, um, so I'm going to do synthetic division, cause, just because. So 3, 20, 23, negative 10, right? And what am I going to divide? What does x equal? Negative 5. Negative 5, beautiful. So I drop my 3, and I get negative 15, and that's 5, and then that's negative 25. Gives me a negative 2, gives me a 10 with a remainder of 0. Yeah? So I get 3x squared plus 5x minus 2. And I need to factor that. This one's pretty easy because there's only one thing that multiplies to be 3, which is 3 and 1. And there's only one thing that multiplies to be 2. And I just have to decide where I'm going to put the 2s at, right? Where does the 2 go? Where does the 1 go? Well, I want it to add up to be 5, so I'm going to do 3 times 2 minus 1. Minus 1. So 3 times 2 is 6. Minus 1 is 5. Wait, gives... do switch them? No. So, wait. 3 times 2 is 6x. Minus 1x gives me 5x. Oh, uh, okay. Because this has to be a negative. I know the 2 goes and when 3x goes. If I put, if I, uh, let me just, can I write it over here? 3x minus 2, right? Did you do it as a minus 2 or a plus 2? I did that as a positive. Okay, great. And so that has to be a minus 1, right? Yeah. So 3 times negative 1 is negative 3x, and 2 times x is 2x, which gives me a negative 1x. Does that give me a positive 5x? No. Okay? So it has to add up to be that middle number. Okay. It's because it's a minus sign. Yeah. Right. Okay. So times x plus 5. And then x is going to equal subtract 1 divided by 3, so that's 1 third, subtract 2, subtract 5. Question? Uh, yes. Where'd you get? Oh, that's where you got it. Right? I thought, oh, I thought it was what we were doing. It was what we did at the end of, we did the synthetic, you know, it was all put together. Okay. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah, it's from here, right? So this is uh, 3x minus 1 equals 0, right? So I add 1, and I have 3x equals 1, and then I have to divide by 3, so it's 1 third. x equals 1 third. I want to know what x equals. You can't forget that 3 there. It's not just plus 1. That made me rip my eyes out when I was doing it. That was math. You can't leave a number with the x because that doesn't tell me what x is. It'll always be a fraction. Okay, so the next one, um, 1, 2, negative 23, and negative 60, and then it's 5, drop down the 1, 5, 7, 35, 12, 60, 0, x squared plus 7x plus 12. So now this one, because it's positive, positive 12, is going to be x plus 3 and x plus 4. And then x minus 5. So x is going to equal negative 3, negative 4, and positive 5. Okay? Questions on that one? So how do you know the difference when you're trying to find a fraction and you're trying to find the story? If there's a number with x, It'll be a fraction, oh, okay. right? Because I have to divide to get x by itself. Okay. Okay. Does it matter what order you put them in? No. Can I do 4, 3, 5? Of course, yeah. Yes. Does it matter what order I multiply things in? No. So if I would have written those a different way, I would have had my answer in a different order. Okay? Okay. Um, so we're going to go on. We're going to talk about solving polynomials. This is our part one. So we're going to start with just solving quadratics first and go over the different ways we can solve quadratics. Um, so, well, technically we're not going to start here. Please flip to the first page real quick. So there's a couple different ways to solve quadratics. Of course, the easiest way is to factor with the zero product property, um, which says if I have two things multiplied together that equals zero, then one of them has to be zero, right? That's what we've been doing to solve uh, the previous on the previous um, in the previous. My goodness, lesson. There we go. 
So if I have x plus 1 times x minus 3 equals 0, x plus 1 has to equal 0, or x minus 3 has to equal 0. And I solve for x, right? Um, the square root property that says if a squared equals b, then a equals plus or minus b. So x squared minus 81 equals 0. Add 81, square root both sides, I get x equals plus or minus 9. Yeah, right? Uh, Everyone okay with that? Question? Yeah. Where are you? I went back two pages. Oh. You good? On the warm-up page we were on? Oh, here. Do you need me to go smaller? Okay. And of course, there's a quadratic formula. No. Which has to be in the form ax squared plus bx plus c. So everything has to be on the same side of the equal sign before you do the quadratic <laughs> formula. And then it's x equals negative b plus or minus squared b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Sorry, I have to say it fast or else I forget it. And then you find out what A, B, and C are. You plug it in and do order of operations, right? It's just plug it in and do order of operations. Um, so we're going to do this. We're going to press. I know. Let's go back and talk about this, these. So the first thing I'm going to do is make sure everything's on the same side of the equal sign. Notice in almost all of those, I got everything on the same side of the equal sign. So what do I do first? Minus 10x squared. Beautiful. What else can I do? Minus 7. Well, plus 7. Add 7. Great. So I get what? x squared. Okay. Okay. Negative 45. Negative. Equals zero. So the first thing I want to do before I do the quadratic formula, because I hate doing the quadratic formula. I've already heard that some of you hate doing the quadratic formula. I hate doing the quadratic formula. I want to see if I can factor it first. So when I factor, I use this little graphic organizer, right? I need two numbers that multiply to be this last number, negative 45, and add to be the middle number, 4. So give me two numbers that multiply to be negative 45 and add to be 4. 9 and 5. I mean, sorry, 9 and 4. No, that doesn't work. 9 and 5, yeah, sorry. So 9 times 5 gives me negative 45. Mm -hmm. And 9 plus 5 gives me 4. It's negative 9. It's not negative 5. It's negative 5. Great. So it's 9 and negative 5. So that makes my little graphic organizer true because 9 times negative 5 is negative 45. And 9 minus 5 is 4. So x plus 9 times x minus 5 equals 0. So x is going to equal to negative 9 and positive 5. Okay? Questions? This works if it's factorable. This little graphic organizer works 99% of the time. As long as there's nothing with x squared, it works 100% of the time. If it has something with x squared, it doesn't work. Just want to put it that out there, okay? So if you have a hard time just doing it in your brain and finding out what it multiplies to and what it adds to, use the graphic organizer. Gentlemen. Okay, number two. I can factor this. This one I can factor also. Because I can say what multiplies to be negative 16 and adds to be 0. Right? There's no x term, so that's 0. What multiplies to be 16, negative 16 and adds to be 0? Negative 4 and 4. Negative 4 and 4. So the factor to negative 4, x minus 4, and x plus 4 equals 0. Which gives me x equals 4 and negative 4. Or you can look at this problem and say x squared minus 16 equals 0, add 16 to both sides, right? And x squared equals 16, and then you square root it. I don't care which way you do it. As long as you remember, there's two answers, plus or minus 4. I should probably make that look like a plus, not a 4. I got the same answer two different ways. It works both ways, right? Whichever way you like to do it, do it that way. Can you write it, the answer in both ways? Yeah. 
Mm, yeah. Sometimes. Usually they like you to write it this way in Delta Math. And how you do it is after you put in the first answer, you just put a comma, it gives you another box. So if you put a comma, it'll give you a second box. Okay? It really hates it if you try and do the plus or minus. It does. Wrong half the time yeah. You wrote it correctly. Yeah, so just do a comma and then it'll give you the other box. Okay? And then the last one, I can. I can factor this, I can factor this last one, but since we're going to demonstrate the quadratic formula, we're going to use that. I'm so excited. Okay, quadratic formula says x equals negative x plus or minus the square root, oh, why did I say x? Negative b plus or minus b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. If you don't have it memorized, you can go to YouTube and Google quadratic formula songs and there's probably one in every genre now that you can imagine you can learn it to a song okay so a equals 2 b equals negative 3 and c equals 1 and now I just plug my values in yes yes it is because get any parentheses in your calculator, your square root will be wrong immediately. Well, why can't you, why, yeah, so just. Don't forget your square roots, but everyone does. And they forget the parentheses around negative numbers. That's why I don't use my calculator most of the time. Use it. Minus minus three is three plus or minus the square root of nine uh, minus 8, I don't know why I made that so long, all divided by 4, so that's 3 plus or minus the square root of 1 over 4, or 3 plus or minus, what's the square root of 1? 1, one beautiful, all over 4, so that gives me two answers. 3, can I slide up now? 3 plus 1 divided by 4 and 3 minus 1 divided by 4, which equals 1 and 1 half. There's your answer. Thanks. So fun. Love quadratic formula. Love it. 3 plus 4. Three. Oh, no. 1 comma 1 half. Sorry. Okay, you guys have, ooh, nine problems. On the first one, I just factored. Yeah. I factored an x out, and I got x minus six. Oh, should probably write that correctly. X times x minus six equals zero. So x equals zero or positive six. Can you show how you factor? Sure. What's in both terms? There's an x in both terms, right? So I can factor an x out. If I take an x out of x squared, I get x. If I take out x out of 6x, I get negative 6. Okay. And then I have, um, so this isn't like factoring a trinomial. This is just a binomial. I'm just factoring what's in common out. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah. So then I have x equals 0 and x minus 6 equals 0. So x equals 0 or negative, or positive 6. I don't know why I said negative 6. Yeah? So. If we do not get, if, our, if we squared our number and it's not a number that can be squared, do we just put b squared, negative b squared, plus or minus the square root number divided by 2 times a? You mean if you, if you have a number that can't be square rooted? You have to simplify that number if it can be simplified. Okay. But then, yeah, you can just leave it that way. Okay, Which I'm going to show you in just a minute, if you'll give me a second to get there. Don't just get there for Wow. <laughs> this one I subtracted 7 from both sides, and I got x squared plus 6x minus 7 equals 0. And I said, what multiplies to be negative 7 and adds to be 6? 7 and negative 1. So it factors to x plus 7 and x minus 1 equals 0. So x equals negative 7 and positive 1. Okay, good. If you want to do the quadratic formula, you should have got the same answer. Okay. 
So the next one, you need to multiply first, right? So I get 5x squared minus 5x minus 7 equals 4x squared minus 8x. Subtract 4x squared. Add 8x. And I get, there's two solutions on all of these. x squared plus 3x minus 7 equals 0. Cannot be factored. There's nothing that multiplies to be negative 7 and adds to be 3. So I need to use the quadratic formula. So A equals 1, B equals 3, and C equals negative 7. Minus 3 plus or minus the square root of 3 squared minus 4 times 1 times negative 7, all divided by 2 times 1. Which equals negative 3 plus or minus the square root of 9 plus 28, all divided by 2. Which is going to equal negative 3 plus or minus the square root of 37 divided by 2. And that's it on that one. Square root of 37 cannot be simplified. Can we just put that into delta now? You'll still be wrong. Um, so it depends on if they give you the plus or minus sign. If they give you the plus or minus sign, you can empty it, enter it that way. If not, you would enter it as negative 3 plus the square root of 37 divided by 2. Negative 3 minus, oh, that should be 37. Square root of 37 divided by 2. You just have to put a comma after the first one and enter the second one. Okay? In delta math. Depends on how they want the answer answered. If they give you a plus or minus in the um, little things to click on, then you can use a plus or minus. So number D. Add 1, 6x squared. I'm going to blow it. Oh, it is pretty, pretty big already. 6x squared minus 12x plus 1 equals 0. Can't be factored. There's no way you can multiply 6 and 1 together to get 12. Sorry, it doesn't work. So A equals 6, B equals negative 12, and C equals 1. X is going to be equal to minus a negative 12 plus or minus the square root of negative 12 squared minus 4 times 6 times 1, all divisible by 2 times 6, which is 12 plus or minus the square root of 144 minus 24, all divisible by 12, yes, which is going to equal 12 plus or minus the square root of 120, divisible by 12. 120 can be simplified um, because 4 goes into 120 30 times. So I can write this as 12 plus or minus 2 root 30, divided by 12. What? I never understood that. Okay. No, they can't. No. Okay. So the, here we go. Ready? 120, right? Yep. I want to find the square root. So I want to find a perfect square that goes into 120. I'm not going to do 2 because 2 is not a perfect square. What's my next perfect square? 4. 4. So I said, huh, does a 4 go into 120? Yes. Yes. 30 times, right? Is there a perfect square that goes into 30? No. no. So I'm done. So what's the square root of 4? 2. two. I don't know what the square root of 30 is. I leave it in there, so it's 2 root 30. Oh. Simplify. Okay. And now I can simplify this because 2, 12, and 6 can all be divisible by 2. So 6 plus or minus root 30 divisible by 6. Okay, now, you, like uh, here to the two, where'd you put, where'd the two go? Adrian. Yeah. Twelve? Yeah. Two? Yeah. Twelve. They're all divisible by what? Two. So, twelve divided by two is? Oh, six. Two divided by two is? Six. Okay. One. And 12 divided by 12 is 6. I just simplified by 2. Are you okay with that? Yeah. Okay. I don't know how we got 2 divided by 2 with 6.
You good? Are you sure? That's only one problem. What is that specific Quadratic formula? Simplifying square roots, you mean, or simplifying fractions? Simplifying square roots. You mean this part right here? Yes. I never understood that. Does it make sense now? Sort of. You want to find a perfect square that goes into them. Luckily, all these are four, I think. Eh. Delta math is not going to accept that answer, just so you know. That is the correct answer. Delta math will not accept it. Because you need to rationalize the denominator. So, so then what does delta math exactly? I'm going to show you. Okay? Eight is four times two, right? Eight is four times two, so the square root of four is two. Two is left inside, so I get this. Still can't have a square root in your denominator. It doesn't let you have it. I hate that rule. But can't have a square root in the denominator, so I'm going to multiply by the square root of two over the square root of two, and I get plus or minus. I forgot I dropped my plus or minus. So sorry. Plus or minus the square root of six over four. That's the answer delta math will accept. But I don't think you have any like that. I just wanted to show you just in case. Which one okay. will you take on the checkboard? I'll take this one. What? Yeah, I'll take either. Okay. Either one is correct. Both of them are correct. I'll take either one. Okay? But you're probably not going to get this question like this on the checkboard. Probably not. I don't remember what they put in there. I didn't build the question banks for these. Ms. Martinova did. Okay. But I'm pretty sure she didn't put one like that on there. Okay. So minus 9x. There's no way I can combine 9 and 7, negative 7 and get negative 9. I can't factor that one either. So x equals minus a negative 9 plus or minus the square root of negative 9 squared minus 4 times 9 times negative 7, all divisible by 2 times 9, which is 9 plus or minus the square root of 81 plus 252 divisible by 18, which is 9 plus or minus the square root of 333 uh, divided by 18. Guess what goes into 333? 9 does, and it goes in there 37 times. So 9 plus or minus 3 square root 37 divided by 18. Yes, 3 goes in there, good. Um, so 3 plus or minus square root of 37 divided by 6. Huh? No, this is, no. The, next, the checkpoint next time is just the vision and the remainder theorem, right? Okay. It does prefer the square root. It won't, if it wants it in square root, it will not let you answer in decimal form. No, 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 no. He's saying in front. No, it doesn't. It's 30, root 37 plus 3 over 6 is the same as 3 It plus is. Three. See? But delta math does not prefer it that way. See? Okay, since time is almost up, I'm just going to give you the answers for the last three. Thank you. So you can find out if you're right or not. Negative 3 plus or minus the square root of 21 over 6. H is X equals negative 1 plus or minus I root 55 over 7. And the last one should be X equals 4 plus or oh. Nope, not four, sorry. It should be two. Two plus or minus I root 14 over nine. Woo. Okay, so I hope you got those right.
be prepared for checkpoint at the beginning of the class next time on division and remainder theorem. Um, I do too. Don't be late or else uh, you won't have time to take it. I hate starting out with polynomials. So fun starting out with polynomials. All of um, everything's updated on Delta on Canvas, so all the videos are there, all the guided notes are there, everything on time, beautiful Delta. I go out and figure out what's wrong with the grading system now. Really? Weird. Because we decided to go in a different order. Please flip to the third page of this lesson. We're going to start with complex numbers first. They all decided after we made the notes that we would do it in a different order, so... I didn't want to reprint the whole packet for one page, so we're just flipping. Okay? So we're going to talk about complex numbers really quick. Complex numbers have a real part and an imaginary part, right? Um, it all is based around I squared equals negative, uh, I equals the square root of negative one, which is right here. Oh, what the heck? I equals the square root of negative one. And if I equals the square root of negative one, what happens when I square it? When I square both sides, right? I get I squared equals negative one because a square and a square root cancel each other out, okay? So if I have an I squared anywhere, anywheres, well, anywhere, I just swap out the I squared for negative one, okay? So would that mean I squared is negative two? No. And we will talk about that. Give me a minute to mark gauge here. Okay, so good question. If I have I cubed, right? Um, sorry, equals negative. I want to know what I cubed is, right? I can write that as, which we're going to do in just a minute, actually, since that's, going to, that, since that's coming up, I'll do that on the problem that we have it with. Is that okay? Okay, and then um, we just have the little real number system where complex numbers fits in in numbers, every single number is a complex number. You have some imaginary numbers, those are complex numbers, and everything else fits into the real number system. If you ever have to graph a complex number, we have, a, instead of an x, y axis, we have a real axis, which is our x axis, and an imaginary axis, which is our y axis. So you would graph um, three, four, I'd go over three, and up four, I. We're not gonna do that, we're not gonna graph today. You might learn that. You'll learn that um, later as you move on in math. And I think you do it in college. I'm uh, not college prep. I think you do it in um, one of the concurrent classes. Okay. So operations with complex numbers. To add complex numbers, we add the real part to the real part and the imaginary part to the imaginary part. So basically, we're just adding like terms, adding or subtracting because it has an I on it. Okay. Um, to subtract, we still same thing. We're adding the imaginary part to the imaginary part and the real part to the real part. Um, to multiply, use the FOIL method. I hate this one. The FOIL method or distribute and combine, then combine like terms. Okay? Um, so we want to simplify this. And this comes to your question now, Theo. So I know that I, square, I equals the square root of negative 1 and I squared equals negative 1. I know that for a fact. Okay, because we showed you. Always equal I squared always, we showed you, right, up here? Yep. Right, I squared always equals negative one because of this. With x squared if, I squared, if I equals the square root of negative one, how do I find I squared? I square both sides, right? Uh -huh. And the square cancels out the square root. Yeah. So I squared equals negative one. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Okay. So if I want to simplify this, I know that I squared equals negative one. So I want to write it in terms of I squared. So I want to rewrite this as I times I squared. Is that not I cubed? Is everyone okay with that? Right? 
So I squared equals negative 1. So my answer is negative I. Done. You will get one of four answers in this section. There's only four answers for this. There's I, there's negative I, there's 1, and there's negative 1. It's the only four answers you can get for this section. Okay. Okay? Yes. Isn't that opposite of y and not negative of y? What? Even though, oh, I didn't understand your question. Okay, never mind. I'm just using some for math. Okay. Whatever variable was negative, you're not allowed to say negative variable. You have to say opposite variable. Oh, no, it's negative i. Okay, that's cool. Okay. Got my <laughs> I'm like, you were never able to say negative? What? What? Yeah, I was never allowed to say negative in seventh grade. Okay. <laughs> okay. So again, I know what i squared is. So I want to write i to the 12th in terms of i squared. Okay? So how many i squareds make i to the 12th? Six. Six, right? Great. Because 6 times 2 is 12, right? So I'm using my exponent rule. So i squared equals... What's i squared equal? Minus one. Negative 1. And negative 1 to the 6th power equals? Negative 1. Negative 1 to the 6th power is negative 1 times 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 negative 1. Which makes 1. Right? Is everyone okay with that? It's not 1 times 6. It's so 1 times 1, 6 times, right? Okay. Oh, if it's odd, it's negative. If it's odd, it's negative. If it's even, it's positive. There you go. Beautiful. So I can do the same thing. The bigger numbers I get, I can still do the same thing. I can write it as an I squared. This is an odd one. So I'm going to write, well, I'm going to take one I out and put this as I to the 136th power. Right? Yep. So then I want to write that as an I squared. So how many I squareds do I have in 136? Whatever half of it is. Yeah, whatever half of it is. Um, half of 13 is 7 with a remainder of 1. 68. 68. 68. Yeah, sorry. 68, good. I was going to say 78, but yeah, it's 68. Okay, so replace that with a negative 1 to the 68th power is what? Oh, negative 1 to the 68th power. 1. Because it's an even power, it's 1. So this means this equals I. Done. Okay, you guys try it now. I don't have an odd exponent, so I can go ahead and make my i squared. So I have i squared to the 120th, which is negative 1 to the 120th, which is 1. Okay? And then the second one, I'm going to look at my exponent. It's even, so again, I can just go ahead and do i squared to the 81st which is negative 1 to the 81st. This time my answer is negative 1, because I have a negative, an odd exponent, so it gives me a uh, negative. And then on C, I have an odd exponent, so I have to pull an I out so I can get an even exponent, 314th, which is going to be I times I squared to the 157th. Okay, which is I times negative 1 to the 157th, or negative I. Negative one? Yep, Whoa! because uh, negative 1 to the 157th is negative 1, right? Okay. Okay, wait. Yes. How would we put the I in delta math? Cause I tried, As an I. As an I? Yeah. I already tried that. Yeah, I had to copy and paste the I. There was a question in Delta Math that had an I in it. Yeah, yeah I had well, to copy we had to do this it. quadratic. Yeah. Oh. I had to copy it. Good job, you guys. Yeah, it's, I'm 
Really? It wouldn't let you put an eye in there? I tried the eye. I was like, no, that's wrong. Okay, fine. Interesting. Yeah, usually you should, we're going to go over quadratic formula. Don't worry. Add that on there, it's not me. and I'm not, I don't do the program. Oh, okay. Why is it um, because negative one to the odd, an odd exponent is a negative one. So this oh, so becomes so it, like, I like, times negative more. one, which is negative I. Oh, I Are you okay with that? Yeah. Okay. Okay. So now we're just going to move on to adding, subtracting, and multiplying imaginary numbers, right? So I, um, if I'm adding, I'm just going to find like terms. So my like terms are here and here and here and here. And just so you know, um, standard form for this is the imaginary term comes last. So that has to come second. I don't know why. It's like an X. Yeah, it's like, but the X usually comes first, yeah. where the imaginary I comes last in, when I'm writing it out. So this is going to be 7 plus 2I done. That's it. Questions on that one? That's just like adding like terms. Are you serious? Yeah. If I'm adding or subtracting, yeah. Okay, now what about the multiplication? Okay, we're going to get there. Hurry up. Cheese and crackers. Okay, so now we're multiplying, right? And I can do it with, I kind of like doing it with the box, so I'm going to do this with the box. Yep. But you guys can distribute it out or foil it or however you want to do it. But I like giving myself a little bit of room. So I've got 5 and 7i and 7 and 5i, right? So 7 times 5 is 35. 7 times 7i is 49i, right? I just multiply just like with variables. So 5 times 5i is 25i. And 5i times 7i. 35i squared. 35i squared. But we already know that i squared is what? Negative 1. Negative 1. So my real answer is negative 35. negative 35. That's why I do it that way so I have a little bit more room to write. Okay? So it's going to be... 74i? Yeah. Did I add that right? Yeah. Because 35 minus 35 is 0, right? And 25 and 49 is 74. Done. 74i plus 35. No, there's no 35. 35 minus 35 is 0. Oh, yeah. We're just doing all these. Mm -hmm. Oh, we got another one. I don't know why this one's still here, but why not? Why not? Right? 11 plus I. Woo, that was hard. I don't know why that was number three. I didn't make these. Ms. Martinova did. Huh? How I do what? This? I just added my like terms together. Negative 6 plus 7I. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, please do um, A through X, maybe. What did you get for number A? 6 plus 6I. Six. Ooh. Let's try not writing with a highlighter. I know. 6 plus 6I. Beautiful. And number B? 22 plus 6I. Minus 6i. Because this negative gets distributed through. Okay. Because the negative gets distributed through. Yes? Are you okay with that? Yes. Number C. Uh, 15. That's what I got. Oh, Yes, negative 6 plus 21i. Erin, okay? Anybody need me to go over it? Yeah. So, right, I'm going to do 3i times 7 is 21i, and 3i times 2i gives me 6i squared. Well, 6i is negative 1, so that gives me, oops. Oh, why didn't you give me the i so that gives me negative 6 plus 21i. Right? Oh, okay, I see it. 
Questions? Oh, I didn't distribute the I correctly. That's what I did. Okay. And this is confusing. Does it matter if the negative six is first? Um, the standard way to write it is put the I second. So when you see it on tests and stuff, the I will always be second. Okay? And in Delta Math, I think they want you to write it that way also. So I just want you to make sure. Because I think they say A plus B I. They want the, it in that form. So, okay, uh, D. Is it 18 plus 12 I? It is 18 plus 12 I. Oh, okay, I got 12 plus 12 I. You got it wrong? Yeah, I got it do wrong. Do you mean to do it? Yeah. Great. I wish God Five minus I and three plus three I, right? Yep. So that's 15. Yep. And negative three I. Yeah. And 15 I. Yeah. And negative three I squared. Okay, quick question. Is all of these, is it always adding to the Of course. You're combining like terms. Okay, that's good to know. Okay. So then I squared becomes negative one, which makes this three. So that's 18 minus 12 I. Okay, makes sense. Okay. I didn't distribute the negative, right? Okay. Number E. What did you guys get for number E? Negative 20 I. Negative 20 I. Correct. And anybody? Everyone okay with that one? Okay. And number F. That's what I got. Which one? D, yes. Oh, it should be plus. Yes, thank you. Thanks, Sarah. Plus. How'd I do E? Negative 2 minus 4i and 4 plus 2i. That gives me negative 8, right? And then negative 16i, negative 4i, negative 8i squared. Well, that's a negative 1, so that's a positive 8, so that makes a 0. So that's negative 20i. Yeah? Okay. Aaron, okay with that? Awesome. So now we're going to go back to the middle page. Well, actually, 